Hey everybody, it's Molly A from Girl Meets Farm here and today we're going to be making peanut butter pudding dirt cups. They're grown-up versions of the dirt cups that you might have had when you were a kid, only instead of gummy worms, I'm going to show you guys how to make little marzipan vegetables to bury in the dirt. First, I'm going to show you how to make my peanut butter pudding. So, grab a big bowl and add three large eggs. The eggs will help thicken the pudding and make it rich. And then in addition to these three eggs, we want to add two egg yolks. So grab a small bowl that you can keep the whites in. All right, so to separate your eggs, just crack it on the bowl that you're going to put your whites into, open it up, and just pour the yolk back and forth from one side of the shell to the other, and eventually all of the whites will drip out. And you can save these egg whites in the fridge for up to a few days, and you can use them to make meringues or an egg white omelet or an egg wash. Don't let those go to waste. And only adding the yolks to the pudding makes it extra rich. And next, add two tablespoons of cornstarch to the eggs. And this will help the pudding thicken. Now whisk this to combine. Whisk it really well to get out any lumps in the cornstarch. You want to get rid of those lumps. My favorite restaurant growing up had dirt cups on the kids' menu. And it would come with a big old gummy worm. And it was chocolate pudding with chocolate cookies on top. It was the best. And now, just set this aside because we're going to mix up our milk mixture. So grab your heavy cream and whole milk and measure out two and a half cups of heavy cream and one cup of milk. And this blend of whole milk and heavy cream gives you the perfect thickness. And instead of just using all whole milk, it's richer with heavy cream. Okay, so pour the heavy cream and the whole milk into a big saucepan. And then sweeten it with three quarters of a cup of sugar. Add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. This will bring out all the flavors. Add a splash of vanilla. This goes really nicely with the peanut butter flavor and then three quarters of a cup of unsweetened peanut butter. And you can practically use any nut or seed butter in this pudding. You could use pistachio butter, cashew butter. You could even use tahini, which is ground sesame seeds. Oof, I think I'm gonna make that one next. And this just adds that delicious peanut buttery flavor and also makes the texture that much thicker. Peanut butter is one of my favorite ingredients. I'm such a sucker for nutty sweets. And when you're storing peanut butter, you know, a lot of people store it in the refrigerator, but it's so hard to scoop out when it's that cold. So I keep it at room temperature. And as long as you use it up by the expiration date, it's fine. Grab your whisk and whisk this together. And then you can also turn the heat on and let this heat up. So turn it on to medium high. And you wanna whisk it frequently so that the milk doesn't scald on the bottom. Every year for beet harvest, I make the truck drivers tons of sweets to keep them going throughout the harvest. And Nick suggested that I make like little beet fields with marzipan sugar beets. And with butterscotch pudding because that's his favorite. So this is just a variation on those. You wanna cook this whisking frequently until it's steaming. I'm just gonna clean up a bit while this heats up. Okay, now that the milk is steaming, you're gonna to wanna to add your eggs, but you don't wanna just dump this mixture straight into the pot because otherwise the eggs will cook immediately and you'll essentially have scrambled eggs in hot milk and that's gross. And so you wanna do a process called tempering, which is when you add some of the hot milk to the egg mixture so that the egg mixture rises in temperature gradually. And you wanna whisk it continuously as you do so so that the eggs stay smooth. So grab your ladle 
and transfer your whisk now to the egg mixture. And so with one hand, you're gonna be whisking the egg mixture. And with the other hand, you're gonna be ladling in some of your hot milk. So whisk it vigorously and then drizzle in the hot milk. Are you getting the hang of this? Add another ladle. Okay, why don't you feel the bowl to see if this mixture is starting to get warm. If it's not warm yet, if it's still pretty cold, you can add another ladle of the hot milk. Is your arm getting a workout? Mine is. I'm earning the pudding. Okay, now that the egg mixture is warm, you can pick up this bowl, transfer your whisk back to the pot with the pudding, and now as you whisk the pudding, drizzle in the egg mixture slowly. You did it, easy. And now we do not have to be worried that there will be any clumps of egg in the pudding. We'll have a nice, beautiful, rich, smooth pudding. I want you to continue to whisk this as the pudding thickens up. It'll happen in a few minutes and it'll be like magic. Okay, how's your pudding doing? Is it starting to thicken? You know it's thick enough if your whisk is leaving trail marks or if it coats the back of your ladle. This is exactly what you're looking for. So turn off the heat and then grab your serving cups and use a nice glass cup for this so that you can see through and see all the layers. Okay, now ladle the pudding right into the cups. Mm, look how smooth that looks. All right, okay, and leave enough space at the top so that you can fill it up with your cookie dirt and the marzipan vegetables. I'm gonna clean off the edge here. I like to make sure everything is nice and clean. And it's easier to wipe it off now while the pudding is hot before it sets. Keep this on standby in case I need to clean off more edges. Doesn't that look good? It looks so silky and luxurious. Pudding is so easy to make. I love that it's a great no-bake dessert. Great, okay, now cover this up with plastic wrap. Now if you weren't gonna be topping it with cookie dirt, I would say, press the plastic up against the surface of the pudding so it doesn't develop that film on top. But because we're topping it with cookie dirt, that's okay. Now put these in the fridge so that they can cool and set. Now while the pudding's cool, I'll clean up a little bit and then show you how to make marzipan vegetables. Okay, now grab your marzipan and food coloring. I'm gonna be using two colors of marzipan today. This maroon beet colored marzipan, and I'm gonna tint some of it orange to make carrots. So unwrap your marzipan. Marzipan is one of my favorite decorating ingredients. It's essentially just almonds and sugar, and I love eating it straight, but it's also my favorite way of decorating desserts. You find it in the baking aisle, or you can even make your own. And what's awesome about marzipan is that you can color it really easily with food coloring. I like to wear gloves so that my hands don't get dyed. I prefer to use gel food coloring with marzipan because it incorporates really easily, but if you only have liquid food coloring, that's okay. Okay, now add a little bit of your food coloring. You can create a little well. and just use your hands to knead it in. So I'm just folding and smushing and folding and smushing, and I wanna work that food coloring evenly throughout. You can already see it's starting to show through. And if you're not wearing gloves for this and you find that the marzipan is starting to get sticky, you can dust it with a little bit of powdered sugar. It'll make it easier to work with. 
Hmm. Okay, so my maroon is pretty dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit more orange food coloring. This is just the type of thing that you can adjust as you go. Okay, this is looking great. This is exactly the shade that I want it. To make a marzipan carrot, pinch a little piece off, maybe like the size of a jelly bean, and then just start molding it into a carrot shape. So you can roll it between your fingers and make it pointy at one end and round it at the other end, kind of carrot-esque. Okay, and you can add little lines in it using a butter knife. So you just kind of want to press in with your knife and roll it around so that you can get little carroty lines in it. These aren't totally realistic. They're more like caricatures of carrots. There we go, like that. And now for the stem, I'm gonna use some fresh rosemary and then rip off a piece that has a few leaves attached. Like one of these. And then all you do is stick it in the top. Ta-da! You're a marzipan master. Okay, so make as many carrots as you want now. I'm gonna move on to the beets. Okay, so pinch off a little piece of the maroon. And this is the same exact thing. This is marzipan kneaded with dark red food coloring. And now a beet shape is more like a ball with a little point coming out the end. So you can roll the ball and then pinch off a little skinny point and then just work it so that it's nice and smooth. That looks like a beet, right? Oh, it needs a stem, of course. So grab a longer rosemary piece. That's a good one. Ta-da! A marzipan beet. Okay, I'm gonna make another beet now. And once you guys get the hang of this, there are so many different things that you could do with marzipan. You could roll it out with a rolling pin and cut out characters with different cookie cutters or cut out letters. I'm gonna be here all day, you guys. How cute is that? Around here, we say, oh, for cute. So I've made enough marzipan vegetables here to top one dirt cup, but you'll need quite a few more of these little guys to decorate four of them. So if you need to hit pause and come back, now's the time. Now stick this in your fridge. And you can also grab your pudding at this point. Ooh. And you can get your cookie dirt. And this is just ground up chocolate cookies. The pudding is looking nice and firm. And now everything's ready to go. I'm gonna show you how to assemble. So grab a spoon and your cookie dirt. This is just smashed up chocolate cookies and spoon it right over the top of the pudding and use a good thick layer because we got some big vegetables to plant. I love eating dirt cups. Dirt cups aren't only cute to play with, they're also really tasty to eat because the cookies mixed in with the pudding is a really nice textural experience. Now take your marzipan vegetables and plant them in the dirt. So wiggle these guys in, and if you want, you can leave a little bit of the tops of the vegetables peeking out. I just think it looks cute. The best part about this dirt is that there's no bugs in it. This is way more fun than being out in the sun and melting while you plant your real garden. Ta-da! How cute are these? These peanut butter pudding dirt cups are adorbs. All right, I've got to have a bite. Peanut butter and chocolate, a perfect match, and that pudding is so rich and thick and creamy. I hope you guys enjoy these. Eating your vegetables has never been so sweet. <laughs>